All right, we got round three of previews for June of 2024. I thought we could get it done in two, but we're learning. Learning with this whole new YouTube experience. This will work out, though. We'll be able to sit there and put three issues out a month from the previews that are only around a half hour instead of doing a huge two-hour long segment or whatever. Or maybe there'll be four issues. or We'll see. Or just... Two half hour issues and one really long final issue. Let's see what happens. But we're starting out with one of my favorite girls in the world. <laughs> Other than my wife. We got She, Return of the Warrior, number one. By Billy Tucci and Stephen Perros. And Gardino Lima. Manhattan has gripped a series of gruesome copycat She killings. As escaped murderer Masashiro Arashi once again continues his notorious crimes of 25 years earlier. This forces single mother Anna Ishikawa to pick up the Niganata once again and stop the psychotic samurai before he can consummate a murderous, murderous destiny. A destiny that ends with Anna's own daughter. Yeah, I gotta... I mean, I'm so happy to see something she that's new again. I am going to have to see where, where that one goes. That one I should definitely wait on a trade so I can get all the different covers and stuff. Because I know I'm going to love all the covers and I have problems trying to decide which ones I'm going to get each month. But we'll see. We got Lighten. Uh, it's a volume one. Oh, we'll see what it is. Trade paperback by Eric Saward and Barry Renshaw. Based on Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just not a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> Ex-soldiers, mercenaries, businessmen. Swapping shooters for suits. It's 1975 in the Leighton and his longtime Batman Wilson run. The Jazz Soiree Club in London's West Side. A classy affair in the otherwise seedy environment of Soho. The duo inevitably incur the jealousy of the criminal underworld who want a piece of the action. What rivals can't buy, they'll take. But every man has his price, and it's good business to be civil after all. Lighten needs a rare piece of kit. Extraterrestrial rare. But how far will he go to obtain it? London is about to find out. Yeah. Paradise Towers Volume 1, Paradise Found. Trade paperback by Sean Mason. And Silvano Beltramo. The sun keeps going behind a cloud. <laughs> yeah, you guys still get a good lit up image, but the whole page goes dark on me. Uh, Paradise Towers. Paradise Found is a graphic novel collecting the 2022 miniseries by Sean Mason. So it is an ongoing thing from the past. It features characters from the 1987 Doctor Who stories. So if you're into that, that'd be a thing for you. We got Commando Presents. Codename Warlord Lord Trade Paperback by Lane McLaughlin, Manuel Bennett, and Ian Kennedy. In 1974, British comics publisher D.C. Thompson launched Warlord, bringing a weekly anthology of action and adventure to comic readers across the U.K. and further afield. Among the most popular strips was Lord Peter... So, if you know the strips, then that's for you. We got Permadeath, One Shot, by Jonathan Chance, Raphael Langelis, Del Barras, Brad Simpson, and various... Permadeath is your one shot at Two Tales of Terror written by Jonathan Chance. Cover the dead with lime. Set aside the playing cards and the poker chips. In this retirement home, the big game is astral projection. The buy-in is high and could cost you your life. Uh, got art by Raphael Langelis from Evil Ernie and Elsewhere. And Del Barris from Conan the Bar Barbarian and Spider-Man. 
in Scattershot, where the lines between video games and Righteous Quest blur as life and limb are nothing compared to glorious victory. Yeah, it's a one shot, and that's my kind of thing when you throw it a little couple little mini horror stories together that hopefully are complete. I'm all for it. And so I gotta mark that one so I remember to check that out later. We got two tales graphic novel by Kilferai, Kilferai, or Kifferai. University student Rara detests animals and she absolutely hates cats. What a bitch. <laughs> Until one fateful night when a second chance, or when a fatal bike accident changes everything. A second chance at life beckons. But there's a catch. She has to get her body back. The bigger catch, she's now a cat, armed with two tails and with a long-lost friend by her side. Rara ventures, Rara ventures on a whimsical journey to show us the very human nature of animals and the immense space that we carry in our hearts for reconciliation. That's another one I might, might have to check out. <laughs> uh, yeah. What do we got on here? Giant robot. I want that sun to come back out. <laughs> so if you could see this, that's why I'm really having problems reading now is because the stuff's so dark. We got Giant Robot. 30 Years of Defining Asian American Pop Culture by Eric Nakamura. Los Angeles, 1994. Two Asian, America punk, uh, Asian American punk rockers stapled together the zine of their dreams featuring Sumo. Or Sumo. Hong Kong Cinema, and Asamu Tezuka. From the very margins of the do-it-yourself press and alternative culture, Giant Robot burst into the mainstream with over 60,000 copies in circulation and annually at its peak. Yeah, it's like, I don't know much about the character, but I'm definitely interested in it. And he looks... Pretty fun. I could get into that. We got a Native Trees of Canada book. And we're jumping. Still in the graph. Well, no, we're going into distillery now. Where we got Life, number one, by Brian Azzarello and Stephanie Phillips and Dan Danigel Zizelge. It's a new series debut. Uh... Doesn't have much of a description here. Create a master fully crafted flip book housing two narratives that collide in unexpected ways. It's 56 pages. It says for fans of Aliens, Ocean's Eleven, and Guardians of the Galaxy. And that could be just about anything. I mean, come on, just give us a little story synopsis. Don't give us what it could be like or for fans of we got the missionary number one by ryan stegman and jason howard another new series debut a horror comic for the ages for fans of preacher chainsaw man and the exorcist i mean i'm all up for this i like two of the three but give me a little story we got time waits number one by chip zadarsky and all, a lot of great people working on this stuff. David Brothers and Marcus too. Another new series debut. For a sci-fi adventure that defies expectation and time itself. The first of four miniseries from Chips Zdarsky and Distillery. For fans of Deja Vu, a history of violence and Looper. Not a fan of any one of those three, but... The little teaser that you tell me about kind of had me interested. And I would have probably bought at least two of the three, if not all three, if I knew more about them. Oh, here we go. I hate that they do this. <laughs> I should have known as soon as I get to distillery. You got like hundreds of pages of the stuff and they show you the things. And I get a little excerpt from the Life comic. Looks kind of interesting. 
looks a little busy get that little interplanetary thing going on it's a flip book like they said so I'm guessing that's why they did the flip over and made had the uh, other one the other way but in the future a death penalty will be considered an act of kindness and covert experiments have forced criminals with multiple life sentences to serve all their time to full term under extended lifespans. For the Casanova killer, he'll fulfill 2,400 years of his 32 sentences, mining on a distant prison, prison planet alongside some of humanity's most heinous offenders. Or heinous offenders. Abandoned for centuries, the prisoners are shocked to see a ship approach filled with thieves hoping their next big score is on the planet's long dead mine. While the prisoners scheme to find a way off the planet, the thieves plan the biggest score of their careers. Eh. I mean, really, if you commit a crime and go to jail, you really want to serve like the full term. <laughs> It's like, that's just messed up. The 2,400 year sentence. And uh, we got the missionary number one. This one sounded the most interesting to me. Before, before I, no, they ain't going to give us any sample pages for that one. Uh, Bryce Hunter is a devoutly religious man whose faith is shattered. When he catches his wife being intimate with an elder from his church. This harrowing event sends Brace spiraling into the hands of a demonic entity named Ividus. Instead of rejecting possession, Brace accepts Ividus. Brace wants to learn to be bad and Ividus wants to be less than completely evil. But before Brace can use this new partnership... To finally live a little, the world's greatest exorcist sees Bryce as his greatest challenge. But that's not even the worst of it, as a murderous group of demons breaks free from hell and threatens to be to reshape Earth into a kingdom over which they rule. Sounds interesting. Now we got the missionary. Time waits. Or time waits. Now after 10 years, er, Meat Blue, a man trapped in the past, which is our present, sent back in time for a mission he could not bring himself to complete. The former soldier builds a life with grace, the sheriff of a small town, the pair build a foundation of happiness on a history of bloodshed as far away from the trigger-happy corporate overlords they used that used Blue as a human gun. I jumped to after 10 years together. Okay, they saw it better before I got the synopsis. Ah, I'm a terrible person, I know. Alright, where are we here? Oh, doing a big jump now. Getting close to manga, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, here's... One from our friends. We got Slaughter Otter. Slaughter Otter. Number one coming out from Matt Fife and Matt Rogers, creators of Happy Astronaut. And you can catch them on their YouTube channel, Cartoonist by Night, to catch them live. Or, well, not live, but <laughs> on video. And check out their other things that they got going on. But Slaughter Otter number one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got a big furry thing that is trying to sneak in here. <laughs> He's not happy that I'm not holding him. Because I got to lean forward to do this. But he's going to have to suck it up. <laughs> yeah, Slaughter Otter number one. Do you miss the days when comics were nothing but page after page of non-stop badass action? Well, good news. Those days return. In this 
Senses Shattering First Issue, Slaughter Otter is sent on a mission. Recover the Leech Queen's stolen device and slaughter everyone who gets in his way. But what happens when Slaughter gets double-crossed? What do you think? He lets his claws, shink, shink, out. (laughs) Yeah, that's going to be a fun one. I can't wait to see that. And you should definitely check out Happy Astronaut if you haven't yet. Lots of fun with that character, too. Do we have anything else on this page? No. Then we jump over to Odina number one. Stupid sun's hiding on me again. And I'm holding the cat in the other hand. So We got Onaji Rose, Eric Blake, Beto Manessis, Bruno Lima, and Matthias Suave. We find our titular, t- titular heroine and her Omni Strike team facing Felix Roll, a man whose powers have grown exponentially with the fires of their battle barely cooled. Odina and her team learn that Felix Roll is just the tip of a deepening mystery. Can Odina trust the mysterious stranger with one too many answers? And who is the enigmatic and deadly Lady Ty? Hmm. It's Carl Barks comics th- thing if you know him at all and followed any of his stuff over the years. Oh, yeah, UFO Mushroom Invasion, that sounds interesting. By Shirakawa Marina. A flying saucer crashes deep in the mountains of Japan. Wary of the hyper intelligent beings they find inside. The government hides from the public all news of the alien craft. But it's not the strange visitors themselves that they should be afraid of. The real danger is the parasitic spores smuggled aboard. Will Earth survive the UFO mushroom invasion? This was originally published in 1976. That sounds really fun. I could get into that. Yeah, and those are all full books. And we got Defenders of the Earth, number one of eight. I recognize, yeah, Flash Gordon. Recognize a couple characters there. It's done by Dan Didio and Jim Californ and letters by Carlos M. Manguel. Flash Gordon, The Phantom, Mandrake the Magician. Yeah, that's the other. Yeah, Mandrake back there. And Lothar are united again in this reimagining of the classic animated series, Defenders of the Earth. Picking up with characters and storylines from the original series. Flash confronts Ming in a final battle, only to find that even greater threats await him and his teammates, as they each must confront ghosts of their past to protect their families and future. It's an eight-part series, so that's definitely going to be a trade for me. But yeah, I like those characters. It'll be fun seeing them in a team-up. It got Kosher Mafia number one. This is by David Hazan and Sammy Cavelli, Ellie Wright, and Simon Boland. In Cleveland, Ohio in 1936, Howard Beckowitz, the bookkeeper for the Jewish mob, finds himself on the wrong side of an enforcer's gun when he tries to spur the Kosher Mafia into action against rising tide of domestic Nazism in the German-American Bund. Ah, I got major dry mouth. You get to see a nice image of the sample pages there. I can barely see them with the (laughs) sun behind a cloud again, damn it. This keeps getting away on me. All right. 
So next page here, your phone call away. By Rich Duak, Russell Olson, Lucas Catoni. 14 years ago, Emma and Andrew Walker suffered a devastating loss when Mandy, their six-year-old daughter, was kidnapped. Her unrecognizable body was found one week later. The case and resulting media coverage moved an entire nation to the point that everyone knew who the walkers were. Everyone felt sympathetic, which indirectly propelled the walkers' business and careers years past, and now their second child is missing. Can they find her in time? So sample page is there for that. Going next. Going a few pages up. Right. We got the Principles of Necromancy by Jackson Lanzig and Colin Kelly, Eamon Winkle and Jay Fotos. Photos. While brave knights and dangerous monsters wage endless war, business is booming for Dr. Jacob Eyes, a traveling physician whose arcane remedies are the closest thing to magic the world knows. These gruesome miracles are only stepping stones for Dr. I's ultimate ungodly goal to overcome death itself. Yeah, <laughs> doing some major speed walking there. The Pedestrian Number One by Joey Esposito, or Esposito and Sean Van Gorman. Behold the pet pedestrian. A strange visitor speed walks into Summer City and silently changes the lives of its residents. But not all is quiet in this sleepy small town, an ancient conflict linked to the secret history of street signs is brewing. Don't walk, run, in the pedestrian. Justice always has the right of way. <laughs> Looks pretty interesting. Not my cup of tea, though. Let's see where we at. Jumping over to No Future by Eric Corbyron and Jeff. Stella Corp is the trillion-dollar leader in space tourism and interstellar settlement. Corruption in an outfit that big can be assumed. But they police their secrets rigidly. When a lone thief manages to steal delicate documents, however, they call in mercenary bounty hunter Halen Brennan to track him down, retrieve the stolen material, and eliminate the culprit. Her callous demeanor is put to the test. However, when she finds the target, Jean-Claude Belmondieu, a <laughs> down-on-his-luck thief, with seemingly noble intentions. We got Convoy by Kevan Stevens, K E V A N, not used to seeing it spelled that way. And Jeff. It's 2074, and the earth is a landscape of desolation thanks to mankind's inability to live in moderation. Alex and Fonzie are two mercenary couriers who are about to take the contract of their lives, leading a convoy of misfits on a mission to deliver precious medicine across the desolate plains. They'll face lawless hordes and competing agents, and their fleet will shrink before they reach their destination. But none of those opponents will be prepared for Alex and her wily ways. And then there's Mezcal by Kevin Stevens and Yef. Vinanka Darmont's life has sucked since his father struck him with such a weird name before disappearing. When he comes home from his soul-draining job to find his mother dead from an overdose, he describes to abandon the 31 he decides to abandon the 31,000 in debt she left him to find a new life in Mexico. But trouble follows him like a shadow, 
and he soon finds himself wrapped up in a world of drug smugglers and federal agents. In the middle of all that, however, is perhaps the one good thing ever introduced to his life, Leela. And when she's kidnapped, rescuing her becomes his single purpose. A few interesting ones there. This looks like an EC Comics. Yep. Oni Press. You got Cruel Universe number one. Variety of writers and artists. Compelled to oblivion, driven to entropy. All life in our cosmos can only end in one place. Complete annihilation. For the first time in 70 years, the limitless fury of EC Comics rages back to life to shred the very fabric of the universe itself and wrench bizarre tales of time and space into our dimensional plane. Yeah. Those... They've been doing lots of EC Comics bring back type things. And they've been a lot of fun. we got Sesame Street number one of... Four. Don't forget about Biker Mice from Mars. We got Joey Esposito, Austin Bichelle, Aaron Hunting, although she's doing a cover. Stroll along Sesame Street and join Grover, Elmo, Cookie Monster, and more of your favorite fury, favorite furry friends in this brand new comic book series for readers of all ages. You got the evil Sesame Street earlier, and now you got the regular Sesame Street style book. Rick and Morty fans, of course, got another thing going. Rick and Morty, Youth in Rick Volt, number one of four. By Michael Morrissey. Tony Grigori. From, let's see, Rick's been cagey lately. Especially cagey. And secretive. After yet another misadventure with Morty goes haywire. Morty begins to pull away from his grandfather. So Rick does what any healthy, mentally stable grandparent would do. He secretly creates a universe with new grandchildren who actually love him. Only problem is, that universe has now reached adolescence and is rebelling, threatening the entire universe. This uprising, led by a fierce, glass-eyed Morty and his army of re revolutionaries, aims to fight and kill the very good that created it. Er, Rick. Alright, let's see here. Another Rick and Morty Finals Week Contested Convention number 1 by James Asmuth and Jim Festant. And Susie Blake is the artist. As Morty's poli science, poli sci exam approaches, he persuades Rick to portal him to President Curtis for some much needed extra credit. With Curtis, or, yeah, with Curtis is on his way to secure his party's presidential nomination. And Rick, Rick determined to prove even the dumbest version of him could beat Curtis. Doofus Rick's hat is thrown in the ring. Competition heats up when Doofus announces Jerry as his VP and Beth joins the race to become the first woman president. It's going to be one contested convention. My mouth is dry. Yeah, you get so dry when you... Alright, jump a couple pages. Paper cuts. And I know this is a number two, but I have to mention it. Because it's from our friend Art Baltazar. And this was a surprise to me. I didn't know it was coming out already. But we got Yogg's Volume 2, The Gouache War. Continuing the, the story events from where Yogg's The Kranobi Tales left off. We find our Cray heroes thrown into the gouache war. 
This action-packed adventure of good versus evil tells us more about the Kray characters and reveals much more of the legendary Kray lore and the mysteries that surround the land of Yags. What is the Kray Stick of Joy? How angry is the Angry Stick? What magical mysteries do they possess? One thing is for sure. If the sticks touch it will mean or if the sticks touch, it will mean destruction and devastation for all. What challenges lie in front of the craze? Why won't Wizard use the mystic orb? What does the giant green gorilla play in all this? Will the Cray Cousins find the Cray Stick of Joy in time to save Cray City? It's like, it's just Cray Cray fun. You gotta check out Yags, get the first one, get this one, uh, get everything Art Balthazar. You won't be disappointed in that uh, from Electric Milk Comics. And he's been putting on a lot of stuff lately through paper cuts. He just did his Dr. Seuss book, so check those out. And there's some other surprising things coming out soon, I think. Some fun things. Alright, we're taking a big jump. I'm surprised we haven't hit the manga section yet. Let's see here, what do we got going? Wood Stake number zero by Darren S. Cape. Philippe Kroll, time to release on the 55th anniversary of the Woodstock Music Festival. Sink your teeth into Wood Stake, a brilliant horror comedy about three days of peace, music, and blood. In the summer of 1969, an old and deadly vampire awakens as hippies unknowingly gather for the historic Woodstock Festival. Amidst the backdrop of peace, signs, and protest anthems, festival goers are hunted in a chilling but hilarious adventure filled with music, mayhem, and vampires. Tripping hard on drug-infused hippie blood, Woodstock is a must-have series masterfully blending 1960s counterculture psychedelic imagery vampire mythology and biting humor into something truly special prepare for a wild ride of laughs and frights in woodstake yeah, i'll have to look into we got night never ends graphic novel a horror comedy graphic novel about turning 30 and also accidentally catching the attention of a killer cult. On the Friday before Kate's 30th birthday, she convinces her friends to go back to her hometown to celebrate. The plan, break into an abandoned house and hold a seance, just like she did in high school. As the friends join hands over the Ouija board, an unsettingly real scream splits the air. What started as a fun way to relive their punk adolescence before accepting the weight of adulthood turns into a night of fleeting bloodthirsty cultists. Can they find a way to get out of the suburbs alive? And we got PP Poo Poo, number one one shot, which I thought they already did one under that name, but must have had some sub name with it. Four issues into the series, and we finally get Pee Pee Poo Poo number one. Was it time travel or just a marketing move? The world may never know. In this issue, Caroline discovers a fresh start is surprisingly hard to make in uh, Philly. Romance blossoms in First Date, a classic Allison Bechtel. Comic gets an update in Femme and Butch, and a night out turns complicated and stoned again. Caroline Cash's gay modern take on 60s underground comic continues to make readers say, Hell yeah! As always, this issue is printed with a cardstock foil cover and sticker sheet. Haven't checked those out yet, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to have to swing back for just a separate manga version and 
do that. So keep following Under the Cult of MS. Rate, review, subscribe. Tell a friend. And we will get back with more soon. Bye.